Have you been trying to heal your trauma so long? It's become a massive part of your identity. In fact, has it taken over your entire life? Do you find yourself constantly thinking about spiritual warfare and attacks from the enemy and all the things that you've survived? Have you been given a diagnosis of post-traumatic stress disorder and find that trauma healing by the psychological model is not really helping you anymore? In fact, you feel worse than ever? Well, if so, then you're just like I was. So I wanna share my insights from Christ with you all because they have absolutely transformed me in my mind, will, and emotions. He's restored me to vibrant health in ways I never would have imagined before. And so I wanna begin by talking about why I no longer use the word trauma at all. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying horrible things, atrocities don't happen, that we don't survive them. I'm not negating in any way the trauma you've been through, which God abhors, God abhors all evil. I just think of trauma now as evil. And I find that word is much more all-encompassing and makes a lot more sense especially if we're believers, and I wasn't, but reading the whole Bible in context and understanding where evil came from actually gave me a tremendous amount of peace about it all. Not my peace, not that I'm happy that bad things are happening, but then God gave me his peace. As Psalms 147.3 says, he heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds, and I could not find healing outside of myself by any other human or any of my human effort. For 16 years, I labored in vain to do that, and I wound up with a more severe case of mental illness and complex post-traumatic stress disorder specifically than I had in the beginning when it all first flooded my consciousness and when I first woke up to it all. And then I became hooked into this word trauma, and this word defined my life. In fact, it usurped me of my identity. And so I wanna say, yes, trauma, what it really is, is spiritual warfare. It's acts of evil and violence committed against us by other people, essentially other people's sins against us, often repeating itself in bloodlines and generations as one traumatized, wounded generation wounds and harms the next. And I wanna to say to you that all of that is real. All of it is valid. It's just the longer I focused on it, the worse it actually got for me. And I had psychologists tell me, oh, that's just part of the process. And maybe for some people it is, but for me it wasn't until eventually it broke down my entire body and destroyed my health. And what I realized once Jesus began to put me back together again, to heal my broken heart as I gave it to him piece by piece, and he earned my trust, by showing me how gentle his healing was. I realized how that system, although the people in it and psychologists for the most part don't have bad intentions, may not work for all of us. And the main reason I don't use the word trauma anymore is because I've decided to completely, utterly, and fully stop giving the enemy any attention. In fact, not only do I not talk about trauma, I no longer talk about spiritual warfare, except in the context of videos and prophetic teachings like these, where I'm sharing my insights of how I overcame it all with Jesus, not on my own strength, not in my own will but through allowing him in and allowing him to fight my battles for me. And I've come into such a deep, intimate relationship with Christ. That is what has healed me. That deep intimacy, that deep trust in psychological terms, forming a strong, secure attachment to Jesus, to God, letting him fill that void within me that only he was ever meant to fill. Not the outside world, not the love and approval of other people, not even a discipleship program. Allowing the Holy Spirit the way he always intended for him to, to disciple and guide me and heal me and transform me. Like Psalm 23 says, he restores my soul. And the way that he restores our souls, which can be known as our mind, will, and emotions, is through the work of his spirit in us when we surrender those broken parts of us to him, which does require deep trust and intimacy. But I needed supernatural healing. The healing mechanisms of this world all failed me and I failed in my pursuit of them both. And I've made videos like this in the past where I have psychologists now branding me on the internet because they're defensive and can't acknowledge the limitations of their own profession, but I also have friends who found Christ and left psychology because they realize that the truest, deepest healing is being restored to God, our creator, and that other healing can be useful, other healing tools can be useful, but without healing that deep core wound of separation, the truest trauma wound every single human being in this world has, the ways of this world, the tools we've tried to develop to survive our fallen nature, are always going to fall short of the one who created us in the end. 
And I just want to say to you that God wants to heal you of all the ways that this world broke you. He wants to lift you up so high that this world no longer even affects you. You know, in evangelical circles, I found people praying in ways that seemed really contrary and odd compared to what the Bible said. That seemed really fleshy and in a religious spirit where we're just demanding things of God, reminding him what he's already written in his word, i.e., God, your word says this, and I claim this, and I declare this. And to me, it feels like actually a really insecure form of prayer that's a false sort of empowerment. I'm not saying that God's promises aren't true, but what I am saying is chopping up the Bible into little pieces and making a formula to get what we want from God and manipulate His will is spiritually immature, and also it doesn't really work. He may still bless us, but my entire walk with Christ, what I learned to do, what he sort of trained me by his spirit to do when I rejected the discipleship of flawed and perfect humans as flawed and imperfect as I am and fully stepped into the discipleship of his spirit moving in and with me and through me is to just ask. Jesus never once prayed to God the Father like that and I think that tells us a lot. A lot of us are wielding his power in ways that we were never intended to and I believe that's what Matthew 7 is about when he talks about how many will say to me in that day on judgment day, Lord, Lord, we cast out demons in your name. We performed all these signs and wonders in your name. We did all these things in your name. And he'll say, depart from me, workers of lawlessness. I never knew you. Because the law and these principles, these spiritual principles in God's power can be wielded by unbelievers as well. There is power in the name of Jesus, don't get me wrong. But to have true intimacy with him, we have to stop keeping him at a distance because true power comes from God alone who has all power and authority. And to receive his power and authority, the best way that I've found that has set me totally free and helped me to live in a grounded state of peace unlike anything I've ever experienced, even in the beginning when I first was filled with his spirit, is by simply doing this. Lord, I cannot fight these battles on my own. Or Lord, I cannot heal this by myself. I'm just your little sheep. Please help me. I need you. Those three words are the words that Jesus is just waiting to hear so that he can rescue us. We, the church, are his beloved bride, and he is our husband. A bride doesn't fight battles against evil in the world. Her husband fights them for her. He is the one that commands the heavenly host, the God of hosts himself. And frankly, the biggest reason I've stopped talking about the enemy, spiritual warfare, and trauma is it gives him way too much attention. It causes me to keep my mind focused on the things of the devil in this world instead of keeping my thoughts fixed on what is pure and good and lovely, what is right and true, like Philippians says, which is alluding to Christ himself. Even though I can see in the spirit, even though I'm very aware of the demonic realms, I don't focus my spiritual vision there. I focus it all on him. I focus from my heart on my love of him. I see his shining, beautiful, smiling face. I feel his presence in my heart. Respond to that love and that love overflows. And it is that loving, intimate relationship that protects us from the enemy, as well as harnessing anything that is spiritual warfare like as simply a lesson God is allowing for our growth and development. I think a lot of us are wandering around like spiritual orphans, even though we may be in Jesus thinking he's abandoned us when hard things are happening, when he is just waiting for us to call on him and ask him humbly in prayer and supplication, not demanding and commanding, but just acknowledging how weak we are. For in our weakness, his power, his strength is made perfect. So I invite you to just try that and just feel how different it is. I've made an ebook you can receive if you sign up for my weekly witness email down below. It's called Three Simple Steps to Resting in God's Love. And in it, I go deeper into how to become truly secure and empowered in Christ. There's a little self-assessment you can take that some people might be offended by. And the thing I have noticed is when I'm offended by a teaching, it's often because that's the one I really need to hear. And something I learned from a friend a long time ago was to never waste a good trigger because there's always something within me I need to see. And if I take that to the Lord and ask him, he gently reveals it to me and then he can transform that in me. And then I become freer, I go higher with him. Where I'm currently sitting is 50,000 feet up, soaring on wings like eagles, like Isaiah promises. Spiritual flaming arrows of the enemy come at me and they just sort of bounce off. They might register a little bit. And then I invite the Lord to bring even more peace and stillness in my mind. I ask him for it and he always gives it. 
Our Lord wants us to receive all of our heavenly blessings in the spiritual realms that we've been blessed with. That means his protection, his provision. But I know that none of us are really being taught these things in the institutional church system, so that's why I'm sharing this today. So you can find more about those three steps, which are just to pause, to rest in his love and remember his love for us and let our love for him overflow our hearts, to ask him for his solution, and then to just rest in his peace once we receive it until he brings them forth to us, whether it means taking an action or not. For God is all-seeing and all-powerful, and he wants us to form a strong, sacred union, a deep, intimate connection with him, so he can guide us and lead us and help us, and life just becomes so much easier when we do. Sometimes that requires stepping outside of other people's opinions and what they think we should do, outside of the things we've been taught by those who maybe didn't go that deep with Jesus themselves because they weren't taught to. And so wherever you're at with all that, friends, pray like Paul of Tarsus, pray like Jesus says, in humility, sleeping through the storms, just like Jesus did when all the disciples were panicked, asking him to help you and save you. Most people take the second part where he commanded the storm to stop and try to emulate that. But what the disciples really did was ask him for help, and he helped them. If we go deeper into that story itself, he wants us to have a sort of co-working relationship in this life, not just the afterlife, as we are his beloved treasure ones individually and collectively. So wherever you're at with all that, I'm sending you so much love, and I pray you come into deeper fellowship with Jesus than ever before, friends that you carve out space and time in your days to spend time in the quiet, secret places with him, not demanding anything of him, but just loving him, just letting him love you. For that love is going to lift you so high, you will never fear the enemy again. In fact, you'll laugh when his nonsense comes your way, shake it off and move about with your day, becoming unshakable, invincible in Christ Jesus. I don't know about you, but I can follow a shepherd like that. In Jesus' name, I pray many blessings of peace over you, friends. Amen.